Good evening and thank you for joining us on India Business Hour. I'm Parikshit Lutra and here are the headlines we are tracking at this hour. Apple CEO Tim Cook kicks off his India visit in Mumbai, meets captains of India industry, including Reliance Chief Mukesh Ambani and Tata Sons Chairman Ayn Chandrasekharan, also visits a tech giant's first India retail store that's set to open for shoppers tomorrow. Nifty and Sensex fall over half a percent as IT stocks see heavy selling. Infosys marks its highest intraday fall since October 2019, post a dismal earnings performance. Over 70% brokerages are still bullish on the stock. Insurance regulator revised plans to launch Bima Sugam, its proposed one-stop platform for all insurance-related queries. IRDI chief uh, meets CEOs of insurance companies to discuss the roadmap. The regulator will be releasing requests for proposal for appointment of service providers soon. Air India redesigns compensation for its flying staff, increases the guaranteed flying allowance for pilots and cabin crew to 40 hours a month, also extends employable age limit for fixed-term contract pilots to up to 58 years and revises the stipend paid to trainee cabin crew as well. The centre files a fresh application before Supreme Court opposing legal recognition for same-sex marriages ahead of the hearing, argues that uh, petitions in support of same-sex marriage represent urban elitist views as popular will recognise this marriage as exclusively heterogeneous. Uttar Pradesh police forms a three-member special investigation team to probe the murder of gangster-turned-politician Atik Ahmed and his brother Ashraf. A three-member team of supervisors has been formed as well. Russia's Deputy Prime Minister Denis Manchurov arrives in India for a two-day visit. India's Foreign Minister S. Jai Shankar says that the two nations are in advanced agreements for a bilateral treaty also on the agenda are discussions on humanitarian cooperation. Eleven people die of a heat stroke at the Maharashtra Bhushan Award Ceremony in Navi, Mumbai. Several people have been hospitalized. The state government announces a 5 lakh rupee compensation for each family of the deceased. Tech giant Apple is marking a major expansion of its India footprint with the launch of its first flagship retail store in India tomorrow. Apple CEO Tim Cook kicked off his India visit in Mumbai. He met captains of Indian industry including Reliance Chief Mukesh Ambani and Tata Sons Chairman N. Chandrasekharan. Located in Mumbai's Bandra Kurla complex, the store is tipped to be the most sustainable of Apple stores worldwide. Apple will open its second store in New Delhi on the 20th. The launch of the retail stores comes at a time when Apple is eyeing at expanding its manufacturing capabilities in India, curbing its dependence on China, my colleagues Shivani Gharat and Shivani Bazaars bring us a sneak peek of the two stories. opening its first retail store in India, Apple BKC, which is a 22,000 square feet store approximately. It's big. I'm inside the store. We are here at the preview of this particular store ahead of the launch date and it has beautiful glass facades right here which extend to a nicely uh, done wooden ceiling. Uh, let me just take you inside to see what all is there inside the store. So of course as soon as you enter you will uh, encounter these tables where Apple products are placed whether it is the Apple iPhone 14 or 14 Pro Max very much like any other store uh, which is there globally where you come and experience the customers come and experience the product.
We are standing in front of Delhi's first ever flagship Apple store that will open its gates for customers on April 20th from 10 a.m. onwards here in Select City Walk, Saket. At the moment, the only teaser here is the barricading right behind me, which is based on Delhi's many cultural gates that signifies Delhi's rich cultural heritage. The barricading also has a QR code on it, which can be scanned to get information about the upcoming store and also to download the Apple's Delhi wallpaper. Specially curated playlist based on sound of Delhi can also be accessed on Apple Music through this QR code. Apple has earlier said that Apple BKC and Apple Saket flagship stores are pivotal to turbocharge Apple's future growth in strategic markets like India. In Saket's Select City Walk Mall, the Imagine store was Apple's premium reseller, but the store has been shut down days before Apple's flagship store's opening here. The new Apple store in Saket is likely to be an experience center and a major attraction for tech enthusiasts. Now no need of going to Dubai, yeah. like the officially all the people go to Dubai and yeah. buy a variety of colors to India. Now it's our story is opening in our country. College pass me, mm. so are other kids, other students also planning to come on 20th for this launch? Welcome so and visit. So many plans are going on for the college students to visit the show. Actually, the, uh, we heard, they are, we came to know about Instagram and we seen photos and that, that Apple shows are huge in other countries like New York, Apple Park mm. and Dubai. The store is very huge, but yeah. in our country, the store is small and the only limited variety of colors and products are available. So we have to wait a month or two months yeah. for that particular product. Yeah. Yeah. Now the Apple is opening official. Mm -hmm. Apple CEO Tim Cook is scheduled to meet Minister of State for IT Raji Chandrasekhar ahead of the Delhi store launch on the 20th of April. The discussions are likely to focus on Apple's India plans. Tim Cook is likely to express confidence in India, acting as a manufacturing design hub for Apple. He's also likely to share commitment for further expansion of Made in India Apple products. So why is Apple so hot on India? Ashmit Kumar explains. Well, Cupertino, California to Mumbai can be a long flight, but by the look of things, Tim Cook is excited and charged ahead of India's retail store launch. This launch marks Apple's 25 years in India, but it is only in the last few years that we saw Apple really dialing in. Now, in the month of February, Apple chief referred to India as a hugely exciting market and a focus area for the company. So let's take a look at what has inspired this focus on India by Tim Cook. Now, Apple began production in India in 2017, usually with old iPhone models. But all of that has changed. Apple's Taiwanese contract manufacturers, Wistron, Foxconn and Pegatron, have dug in their heels for the long haul and are going full throttle. So why is Apple looking at India now? Well, Apple woke up to the heavy dependence on China with the COVID lockdowns that severely impacted production as well as exports. Moreover, with geopolitical tensions adding to the wars, a need was felt by the Cupertino-based company to make the supply chains more resilient. India, moreover, proved to be a strong performer with stable production despite COVID. And finally, the cherry on the cake was the PLI scheme. India, now the most populous country in the world, proved to be a large market. 2022 alone saw sales of 7 million units. But the larger story is that of India as a manufacturing and exports hub. India posted unprecedented growth, recording electronics exports of $10 billion in FY23. Of this export figure, Apple's exports alone accounted for nearly half of it. Apple exported over $5 billion worth of goods, crippling its exports from FY22. Apple has become the first company ever to record exports of $5 billion from India. In comparison, Samsung posted exports of $3.5 to $4 billion for the same fiscal. Now, inspired by these recent successes, Apple now plans to triple production in the next two years. In fact, a recent report by J.P. Morgan indicated that Apple wants to shift manufacturing of 25% of all Apple products to India by 2025. Now, this intent is reflected in the contract manufacturers like Foxconn doubling down on their investments. Foxconn is planning to pump in $500 million. It is also planning to quadruple its workforce in just the next two years. So, for 2023, expect Apple and its contract manufacturers to, one, expand facilities, scale up production, increase the workforce, and also develop design and innovation hubs here in the country. But Apple's journey may still see some challenges. For one, India is still heavily reliant on China 
for importing key components to assemble phones. Moreover, of the 120 suppliers to Apple, only 12 are currently manufacturing in the country. India will also have to face challenges from countries like Vietnam that offer lower duties to attract investments. Meanwhile, the value addition in India is currently restricted to about 14 to 20 percent. And finally, the delays in payout of PLI incentives to companies may cause some discomfort. Apple, for now, is betting big on India in the China plus one strategy. But India will need to remain on its toes to continue to grow as a manufacturing and exports hub. And there's more from the smartphone space. Latest data by the IDC showed that Samsung has the largest market share across the globe, while Apple has the highest premium price point. So while Apple's highly anticipated store launch in India is grabbing all the eyeballs, Manglam is here to decode the global smartphone market. Manglam, tell us more. 25 years after being in India and 500 stores across 25 countries in the world, Apple finally comes to India. But ahead of the Apple India store launch, let's get uh, some interesting and exciting data coming in on smartphones in the world and in India and iPhone as well. Now, according to latest figures coming in from IDC, Samsung is currently leading the worldwide smartphone market share with 21.6%, followed closely by Apple at around 18.8%. But remember, these are millions of units. If you talk about average selling price, iPhone sells at nearly $800, which is little over three times Samsung's average selling price of $254. So if you club these numbers with the volume numbers, Apple's global market share in terms of value is over 50%. In fact, 50% is the mark that it crossed for the first time in the last quarter itself. Moving on to India, where, you know, Xiaomi, Samsung, Vivo, Realme, Oppo are the ones that dominate the market. That's largely because the Indian market is still value sensitive. The way to look at India is through multiple segments. The Indian smartphone market, we've divided into three segments, $500 plus, $300 to $500, and $300 sub. It's the $500 plus market which grew at 55% last year, and the sub $300 market declined by 15%, and that reinforced the K-shaped thesis of all economists. And it's in this premium segment where Apple has a staggering market share of 60%, and it's distant cousin is Samsung at around 21% itself. In fact, all of last year, iPhone 13 was the third most shipped device. Roughly 6.5 million iPhones were shipped last year in India. For Apple, which is still dominated by strong contribution coming in from US, EU and China, India isn't even among top 6-7 markets. In fact, it's about a percent and a half of their overall sales. But Tim Cook has pointed about the potential in India in their previous earnings call as well. And last year, Apple's revenue in India grew by over 50%. And here's the data on the Indian market. 50 million 5G phones were shipped in 2022 with an average selling price of 395, talking about a big headroom. And IDC does believe that these 5G devices could be up roughly 60% of their overall shipments in 2023 itself. And that brings us now to the Apple store in BKC, for which reports suggest that they're paying 42 lakh rupees per month, plus 2% of their monthly sales as rent, which escalates by 15% every three years and 0.5 percentage point increase in their monthly sales share as well. Now, globally, Apple does about 6,000 to 6,500 rupee dollars per square feet as sales. Now, assuming one third of that in India, because India is a value sensitive market, Apple BKC alone could do 300 crores in annual sales. How's that for numbers? All right. Uh, thanks very much uh, for getting us that update, uh, Manglam. Let's also uh, get you all uh, the day's market action now. Sensex and Nifty snap its nine-day winning streak to fall over half a percent. Weakness in IT weighed on sentiment. However, financials uh, bucked the trend. Nifty banks saw gains for the fourth straight session, while mid-caps also outperformed. Infosys tanked a whopping 15% in intraday trade, marking its uh, biggest fall since October 2019. This comes on the back of a dismal fourth quarter performance. Infosys saw a market cap erosion of over 54,000 crore rupees today. Meanwhile, 70% of brokerages remained bullish on the stock, while 15% gave a sell recommendation. Reema Tendulkar is here with the details. Reema. Despite a dismal Q4 performance and the stock being lower by nearly 10%, 70% of the brokerages are still bullish on Infosys. Out of the 46 brokerages tracked by Bloomberg, 32 of them 
have a positive view on Infosys. Seven of them are neutral and seven of them are negative. So let me run you through each of them. So on the bullish side, you've got CLSA, which has downgraded the stock to an outperform from a buy. Their target price now stands at 1550. Kotak Institutional Equities has a buy call, though the target price has been brought down to 1470 after a 6 to 7% EPS cut. They're saying that Q1 will be muted, expect a recovery only in the second half. Morgan Stanley also bullish on Infosys overweight call. They are worried about the margin guidance ban being lowered and they've cut the target price to 1475. On the neutral side, I've got McQuarrie, uh, where the target price is at 1400. They're saying the guidance miss after raising it in January raises the possibility of a derating. Nomura is also neutral on the stock after an 8 to 9 percent cut and a downgrade. And JP Morgan is negative on Infosys. They have cut it down to underweight. Their target price is below where the stock is currently quoting at, at 1200. Uninspiring commentary, um, ambitious guidance posts the sharp miss, is what they say. On that note, we're taking a short break here on India Business Hour. But coming up, Air India redesigns compensation for its flying staff and increases a guaranteed flying allowance for pilots and cabin crew to 40 hours a month. That and much more when we're back. Let's you and me step out and see how blue the sky, how tall the trees. Let's you and I step out to find how far we go, how far we go, how deep the sea. La, 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 la. With a five-star global end cap rating, Shkora, Kushak and Slavia are India's safest family cars. Air India has revamped the compensation structure for its flying staff, that is, the pilots and cabin crew. The airline has increased the hours of guaranteed allowance and also standardized flying allowance rates for different levels in line with industry practices. Madhiha Mujavar joins us with the details. Madhiha, what's the new structure looking like? Well, the new structure covers both pilots and cabin crew, as you mentioned. Let me first talk about the announcements for pilots. The big one is increase in guaranteed flying allowance, which has been hiked from 20 hours to 40 hours. The airline has introduced two additional levels in the pilot category, junior first officer and senior commander. A pilot in command with four or more years of command experience will be promoted to senior commanders as executive pilots of the management cadre. The airline has also extended employment contract for fixed term contract pilots up to the age of 58 years. The CTC per month for pilots looks like this. Trainee pilots to get 50,000 rupees, junior first officer to get 2.35 lakh rupees, first officer to get 3.45 lakh rupees, captain to get 4.75 lakh rupees, commander to get 7.5 lakh rupees and senior commander to get 8.5 lakh rupees per month. Now coming to the cabin crew side, here too Air India has guaranteed flying allowance to 40 hours per month and redesignated cabin crew into four segments, trainee, cabin crew, cabin, uh, cabin crew senior and cabin executive. The stipend for trainee cabin crew has been revised and the new CTC for cabin crew looks like this. Fresh trainee cabin crew to get 25,000 rupees per month, experienced trainee cabin crew to get 30,000 rupees per month, cabin crew to get 53,000 rupees, cabin senior to get 64,000 rupees and cabin executive to get 78,000 rupees per month. Air India says the revised salary structure for both pilots, pilots and cabin crew is in line with industry practices. All right. Thank you very much, Madhiha, for joining us with that big news break. Moving on and getting you more national headlines now. Three uh, men arrested for murder of gangster-turned-politician Atik Ahmed and his brother Ashraf were moved to the Pratapgarh district jail earlier today. The UP government has also formed a two, three-member special task forces to investigate the matter. At least 11 people died after suffering a heat stroke while attending the Maharashtra Bhushan Award Ceremony in Navi, Mumbai on Sunday. The event, which was held outdoors in an open ground, was attended by Union Home Minister Amit Shah, Maharashtra CM Eknath Shinde and his deputy Devendra Fadnavis. The Maharashtra government has announced 5 lakh rupee compensation for the kin of the deceased. 
Former Karnataka Chief Minister Jagdi Shetar has joined the Congress party. He quit the BJP after decades on Sunday as the party refused him a ticket to contest the state assembly polls in May. The six-time MLA and former Karnataka Chief Minister alleged that the BJP humiliated him and that there was a conspiracy against him. An army personnel who was earlier an eyewitness in the Bhatinda military base firing has been arrested. He had falsely stated that he had seen two masked people running away after the incident. Army officials issued a statement saying that the arrested individual has confessed to his involvement in stealing an INSAS rifle and killing four of his colleagues. Srinamool Congress MP Abhishek Banerjee has been summoned by the CBI for questioning in the alleged teachers' recruitment scam. This came just hours after the Supreme Court stayed the Calcutta High Court order that had granted the central agency the power to summon him. Banerjee has called the move a contempt of court. However, agency officials have said that the notice was prepared a day ago and delivered today. Russia's Deputy Prime Minister Denis Manchurov is in India for a two-day visit, speaking at an event in New Delhi. Manchurov said that India and Russia are discussing a free trade agreement to guarantee investment between the two nations. India's External Affairs Minister S. Jaishankar said that the two nations were in advance agreements for a bilateral trade treaty. After spending years in obscurity, the Indian drone industry is starting to take off. While the sector is still in its infancy, it is expected to be worth more than $4 billion in a couple of years. Several startups have entered the ring, but very few have managed to back contracts with the Indian Army. Adya Forge is a Mumbai based drone developer backed by marquee investors like Qualcomm, Infosys, Florentry, Exim Bank, and others. Ashtosh Patki reports on the story behind Adya Forge, how it managed to capture 50% market share and its plans to fly into Dalal Street. The movie Three Idiots was the first time many Indian households got acquainted with the concept of drones. And prototype of the drone used in the movie was developed by a homegrown startup called Idea Forge. Idea Forge is now a pioneer in the Indian unmanned aircraft systems with a market share of nearly 50% in 2022. The company has nearly 20 patents registered. It has deals with Indian Armed Forces, State Police Forces and organizations like DRDO. In April 2022, it backed $20 million in its Series B funding round from several investors including Florentry, Infosys and Exim Bank of India, among others. India is getting excited about the flourishing drone industry as it aims to be the global drone hub by the end of the decade. These steps like liberalization of the drone rules, rationalization of the norms of the drone pilots and establishment of the drone schools have given new direction to the industry. The recent allocation of rupees 120 crore under the PLI scheme in the recent union budget acted as a booster dose for the Indian manufacturers. Even just a few years ago, drones were considered a niche industry. But now, investments are starting to pour in. Ankit Mehta, the CEO of Idea Forge, which was formed in 2007, has witnessed a complete transformation in government policies and investments throughout the years. So I have, in a way, seen the drone regulations go from, uh, you know, ignore to deny to accept to support. That whole cycle we have seen, right, uh, from the very beginning. And absolutely, we are delighted to know that now it is a regime that is enabling. It is a regime that wants to deploy these systems in an environment where we will now be able to take these systems and utilize their benefit without undue bottlenecks uh, around the space we are operating in and the environment we are doing it. As long as we are in those green zones up to that altitude, we are free to operate it for whatever purpose is possible. Of course, we have to take the right set of drones to do those operations. Apart from the production-linked incentive schemes for the sector, government is using drones effectively in schemes like Swamitwa. It is an ambitious program to survey and map about 6.6 .6 lakh villages before 2025 to provide accurate land records and reduce property disputes. Swamitwa scheme is actually, in our opinion, one of the largest mapping programs in the world where the government is looking to map all the 660,000 villages of our country and create property cards of all the Abadi areas, the areas where the villagers live, mm -hmm. so that they can have for the first time, ownership of their own uh, 
uh, house and once you bring people into the economic mainstream you can unlock their ability to create the necessary resources for their well-being and their uh, upliftment and their business right so that is the major impact of the swamitva scheme that's the vision with which the scheme was launched in 2021 idea forge was awarded a contract worth 20 million dollars by the indian army for switch uav as a part of its contract with the indian army the drone company shall deliver 200 systems soon to augment army surveillance capabilities in a bid to boost domestic manufacturing the government banned import of drones in 2022 while exempting imports for r&d defense and security purposes however there are no restrictions on imports of drone components india accounted for 22% of global drone imports as of january 2022 idea forge is also gearing up to fly into the lal street it has filed its draft red herring prospectus with sebi for an ipo the global drone market is poised to become a 54 us billion dollar market by 2025 Due to the initiatives like Atmanirbhar Bharat, the Indian drone manufacturing potential will be worth 4.2 billion dollar. Considering all the efforts that are being put in, it won't be wrong to say the sky will be just the beginning for the Indian drone sector. With cameraman Bharat Kori, this is Ashutosh Patki for CNBC TV 18. All right, that's a sneak peek into India's push for drone manufacturing. With that, it's a wrap on this edition of India Business Hour. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.